is cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe, and I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is vlog December, day number seven. I decided to take you along with me to work. I'm gonna show you a little bit of my day. It's already 1 a.m. in the morning and I started work at seven. So very, very busy day. I only have four patients and I have an orientee. I'm still doing, I would say, about 30% of the work and my goal is to get my orientee to 100% of the work. I think I'm being a little bit too generous. I think I wanna say it's like 50%, if not more because I'm in the room with her. It's time for dinner and I'm starving. So I have the soup that my mom made yesterday, which is the beef and vegetables. We call it nilaga. So it's a very hearty soup with um, the beef bones. We also add potatoes in here, um, some pepper, some fish sauce, and it all together just creates a nice comforting soup. So I'm gonna enjoy my soup for the next 10 minutes and then I'll show you a little bit about my work. So part of working in healthcare is being protected, being protective of yourself and being protective of other people or other patients. And so during COVID, we had N95 masks. These are the two main masks that we use. There are a couple of other ones, but this one in particular is called Macrite, and this one is called Honeywell. There is another N95 mask that I've seen people wear called Envo, and there is another one where it's basically your whole head is covered. I don't know the name of that, but I have seen one or two people wear it just because there's no mask that seals on their face properly, and so they end up failing a fit test. A fit test is a test to determine which mask is best for you. So in order to determine that, you basically wear this helmet that's provided, the user sprays a sucralose spray into the mask, and as you're moving or turning your head, if you feel or taste any of that sugar or that sucralose spray, then the mask is not giving a proper seal. So that's considered failing the test. Now, if you don't taste the sucralose while wearing the mask, that means it's giving you the proper seal and that you pass the test. Now for the isolation gowns. So you need to wear this before heading into an isolation room. So you see it's nice and long. It's one size fits most. There's an opening in the back. You put your head right over it. Right? There's a place where you can put your thumbs. And as you put your gloves over, it covers your hands completely. There is a tie where you tie it closed in the back. And you also have Actually, this gown doesn't have it because it's already sealed on the top, but some gown even has a tie on the top. So you can imagine how hot one can get when wearing these gowns in an isolation room. And that's why we kind of limit the time that we're in there. We do our business and we try to leave, but there are times where you have to wear these gowns for at least half an hour while doing patient care, and it can get very hot, especially during the summer. As a side note, when it's cold at night and you have nothing to wear to keep you warm, this is the perfect sweater to wear. So this is me, all gowned up with my PPEs. I have my so-called goggles. I have my N95 mask that's supposed to be fitted for you. I have this disposable gown and my gloves, and you see it's covered and it's over my gown. All right, and so some people also wear a head dressing to cover their hair so they don't have to keep washing their hair or they have those disposable uh, nets, I guess you can call it, from like OR or they also have coverings for their shoes. So all they have to do would be to take them off, toss them in the garbage or take off their hat and then they can put it in the wash. During COVID, we had to wear this all shift. I worked in a COVID unit where every patient was COVID and so you would have to wear this for 12 hours. Yes, you can take a break, but for the majority, once you're done with break, you have to put on your PPE again. That's a rough PP education for you guys. And as you can see, it does leave some marks on your face that will go away later on. The Honeywell is a little bit more delicate, but the Macrite, it will definitely leave a uh, mark on your face. 
So that's a little bit of my life while I'm at work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and press that subscribe button.